Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are coding our Fruit Slashers game, right? And last class we added the spawner and the spawner is responsible for creating our fruits for us in our game. If we go inside our spawner here, it has a timer that is equal 60. 60 means one second, right? And when our timer is over, it then creates a banana that is a fruit and set this banana sprite to be the banana.png sprite, right? And then later it has to reset the timer so it can start counting one second again to create another fruit. So today what I want to do, I want to keep working uh, here inside the spawner a little bit. Actually not inside the spawner, we're gonna work inside the fruit a little bit. So we're gonna start introducing something different that is called randomness. So we're gonna use randomness for a couple things here today. First thing I want to do, I want to create my fruits not only on the middle of the screen, the way it is here, but anywhere here on this bottom of the screen. So in any position, on a random position on the X axis, right? But for the Y axis up and down, we want it to be set it here, right? We want to be uh, not minus 300 actually, I want it to be minus 450 so it can be created outside of the screen now it's better now you can see that the fruit comes from outside of the screen right but that's for the y for the x position we want it to be random other thing that we want to be random is the velocity y so i don't want all my fruits going on the same position here at the top of the screen i want some of them to go a little bit uh, weaker so they will go a little bit under that position some of them will go higher so let's say 45 maybe and they'll go a little bit higher so then we can have more diversity on our game right so to start using randomness here in our code the first thing we need is here at the at the top of the start tab on our fruit we have to say import random and we have to say that so we can use all the random functions that pixelpad has all right, so once we import random, now we can start using our random functions. So here, let's start applying a random position to the X position, right? To the X axis. So I'm saying here that all my fruits, when they are created, so on the start tab, they will all set their own Y position to be minus 450, and they will all set their Y, the X position to be so now I want to say, uh, give me a random number between the left of the screen and the right of the screen, right? But first I need to know what are those positions. So let's try to find the right position first. So let me check 600. Is 600 the right position? Let me see if my fruit is gonna be created there. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the right position. Uh, I could even put a little bit more, but then my fruit uh, would be cut a little bit from the from the screen, right? So I think 600 is fine. So as 600 is the right position, the right side of our screen, uh, we can see that minus 600 is the left side of our screen, as you can see, right? So I need a random number between minus 600 and 600. So then my fruit will be created in a random position here on the screen, right? All right, so if I want a random position, I can say that my self.x is random.uniform between two numbers now. So I will say minus 600, comma, 600. So I'm saying here, give me a random number between minus 600 and 600. That's all that I'm saying here. And whenever I add that code, if I start the game, now you can see that my fruits are spawning on random positions on the screen, right? I mean, only on the X axis. They are all starting on the Y minus 450, which is pretty cool, right? So other thing that I want to do is I want to set my velocity Y, the initial velocity Y to also be random. So I'll say that my velocity y, let me stop my game here, my velocity y is gonna be a random dot uniform. So a random number between, so I want my velocity y to be random between 30 and 45. Yeah, that should be fine. 
So if we try now our game, our velocity y is a random number between 30 and 45, so some fruits will jump higher than others. As you can see now, this fruit went to here, this other went to there, right? So some of them are jumping higher than the others. So now I want to do a couple more things here. The first thing I want to do is because right now, our fruits are pretty small for me. I think that we could make it bigger and we can easily make it bigger using code. So here, what I want to do is I want to change my fruits scale. Okay, so let's say that I've just created this flower in my game, right? This flower, as any other object in our game, has its own scale X and scale Y. So this is the scale, scale X, and this other one here is the scale Y. So both of them start with a number one. So one means that is the regular size. So if we want to make this flower bigger in our game, let's try just changing the scale Y. So if I just increase my scale Y like this, and I say, for example, that my scale Y, now instead of being one, it's gonna be two. So you can see that my scale Y is two, but my scale X is one, right? And that makes my flower to be pretty much stretched. And the same thing happens if we try to change just the scale X. So if I make my scale X two, then my flower will also be stretched. So the best way for us is to change the scale Y and the scale X together. So if I say that both of them are two, then now I have a bigger flower, right? So instead of one, here is two, and instead of one here is also two, uh, right there, right? And if I wanted to make my flower smaller, it's the same thing. We just have to change both scale X and scale Y together. So now I can say that my scale X and scale I are, scale Y are something around 0 0.4, right? So that's how we can change the size of our objects inside the game. Let's see how that works. So here for my fruit, if I want to make my fruit bigger, I can just change its scale X and Y. So I can say for all the fruits, when they are created in the game, they're gonna get this Y position, this X position, this velocity, and self.scalex, this scale X, right? So the scale X starts with one, I want to make it bigger, I'll make it two. And self scale y is also going to be 2. So whenever now I stop and play my game, you can see that I have bigger fruits in my game, right? Which is way better than before. So that's how I'm going to leave it for now. And now what we're going to be doing is we are going to add another velocity to our game, but instead of velocity y, we're going to add the velocity x. So the velocity x will make my fruits not just go up, like this, but it will also go a little bit to the side, so it will make an arc whenever it's falling, right? So, let's start by creating a variable for our velocity y. So here on the, uh, I, will, I will call it under the velocity y, so they can be together, right? Because they represent the same thing, like I did here with the x and y positions, I'll do with the variables y and x and like the same I did with the scale X and scale Y. So I'm just separating my code to be easier to read, right? I'm putting stuff that are related together. So here I'm gonna create myself dot velocity X. And for now, I'm just gonna say that this equals two. Just for now, we can change that later. So uh, if I stop and play my game, it hasn't changed anything yet because we are not using this velocity X for anything. And what I want to do is on the loop tab, I want to change my X position using my velocity X. So I did the same thing with the velocity Y, right? I'm changing my Y position using my velocity Y. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did for the Y, but for the X now. So I'm gonna edit here before, I'm gonna say that self.X, so every fruit will behave like this, right? It will get its own X position, and we'll say that this X position will now sum with the self.velocity x. And now, as you can see, whenever I press play, all my fruits go a little bit to the right as well, right? They not just, they, they not just go up, 
which looks better in our game. But we also don't want to have a static value here. We want each fruit to have a different value so they can go to different sides, right? And our game is more diverse. So instead of using for, again, I'm going to use our random function here. So random.uniform. So the velocity x will start with a random number between, uh, for my, I'm going to say minus 5 and 5. So they can either go to the left or to the right, right? So now if I press play, you can see that some fruits are going to go up, some fruits are going to go left, some fruits are going to go right, right? Because some fruits still are going to go just up and down because whenever I get a random number between minus five and five, I can get zero as well, right? I might make that those numbers uh, bigger actually because I think they are moving just a few to the right or to the left. So I'm gonna increase here instead of minus five and five, I'm gonna say minus eight and eight. Maybe that's gonna uh, make my game feel better for me, I mean. And yeah, that looks better for me. And for now, that's all I want to do in this class. I will save my game. And for the next video, I've prepared a challenge for you. So I hope you are excited for this challenge and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.